everyone just seems to be getting a little bit too comfortable, so we're going to kick things off a little early with our first feature, Francis Carlton. So, Francis is a, Col is a Canberra-based therapist, crocheter, which is a word I didn't know how to pronounce until now, dog mum, Lego minifigure enthusiast, snake wrangler, and poet. After years behind a desk writing business reports or essays, she is now focusing her creativity by writing down the random thoughts that pop into her head when out walking the dog and cat. She mostly works in tanka, but throws in a free form and sequence when five lines just isn't enough. Her poems have appeared in Skylark, Pressure Gauge, Eucalypt, which is a tanka journal, Atlas Poetica, a journal of world tanka, Bamboo Hut, and Poems to Wear, edited by Amelia Fielder. Everyone, please give a very warm hand to Francis. working on a chat book. Ooh, yeah, because that's what you do. Um, it's actually my third chat book. I have three. <laughs> no, that's not. That's just pages. <laughs> so before I get started, I'd like to thank um, thank that poetry thing for having me, um, even if it was because somebody else was sick. But that's okay. <laughs> and um, to thank the Nullarbor people for this land that they so beautifully looked after before we paved it. Mm. So, thank you to those people. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna do sort of two, two themes. The first one is sort of a bit heavy, a bit heavier than the, than the second one. So I'm gonna start with, the dedication in my ladies' chat book is to anyone who's experienced loss. So I'm gonna do some loss poems. This first one's called Sewing Box. My mother had a sewing box, not one of those store-bought, tiny, paisley padded with plastic handle boxes. This was a handmade wooden box, the size of a tea chest on its side with a parquetry lid, thick brass handles and an intricate engraved lock. Inside there were hewn trays, button tin on the top right, zips and cards of poppers on the left, ties, fasteners, hooks and eyes in a small worn tub. Scraps of lace, silk, organza and dupion tied in a bundle and laid in the middle. Spools of thread lined up neatly, old wooden reels and new, just enough colour showing to know the truth of it. In the bottom was a smaller cardboard box, the patterns, Burda, Butterick and McCall's, thin tissue stuffed into outer paper casing, never as neat as pre-cut, drawings of thin white women wearing flowing florals and formals, little girls in bows and bonnets, boys in belly-reaching bell-bottoms, toddlers in tees and shorts, all adorning yellow wrinkled covers. After I moved out, I never saw the box again, but it never stops overflowing in my mind, sharing knowledge with my fingers, spilling its influence. Thank you. Everything I wear with pride, because you taught me how. Mist match patches darned across my heart. Strength in repair. Dappled sunlight warms my naked flesh. Bluebells bloom under lush green with memories of making love. Budding daffs under canopy, arborglyphs, ancient declarations. Shaz hearts Dave. I watched clouds tango before darkening. Oaks stand alone. Pretty much the one that started it all is Button Tin. 
I sit with my legs crossed, tip the contents out, scattering reds and blues amongst the bones, some on their skins, others on crumpled cards, most randomly nestled together. I watch over ladybugs that can't fly, anchors that won't sink, kittens with six straight whiskers, flowers with no scent, and sharks with no bite. Snipping orange scissors, turning fabric sheets into magic, pinned tissue as her guide, vogue and simplicity inspired, the next move, the next stitch. I care less about decorum, much more about comfort, one leg straight, enameled ice cream cones peeking out from discs with holes, after years of play, sorted, like colour with like, neat and tidy, sorted out, neat. My legs spread wide, I can't cross them anymore. Green and earthy highlights, conversations of divorce, hers, then mine, twisting that single strand of diamante, ending near, but her sparkle never faded. What happened to her button tin? I gave it to the lady down the road because she sews a bit. And just two more on loss before we move on. So you probably figured my mum features quite heavily in my in my lost poems. Um, it's been a decade since she um, since she passed away from a variety of different cancers, and. We used to laugh a lot, and I have to confess I miss that laughter, although I've got it in me still. But one of the things that she used to do, she wasn't a very good influence in some ways. She used to heartily encourage scrumping. And for those of you that don't know what scrumping is, it's when you nip into other people's back gardens and you nip the fruit off the trees. <laughs> And I have to say, I still do that, especially when I see lemon trees poking their limbs over the fences and apple trees when they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is taking them off and using them. Why have fruit trees in your garden and not use it? So I, you know, help myself. So this one's called In, in the Woods. I seek your sweetness to get to you. I let your razor-sharp claws scratch. I'm transported to when Toto was blessed by rain. Vegemite gave men muscles, shoulder pads were a must, and hair put fuzz on trend. No longer badger holes and stampeding bovine, now kangaroos, kookaburras, and pesticides. Seasons flow by, sh by shadows lengthen, spring growth tendril weave, cross country runs through early morning fog, strolls with Muv and the dog late on long summer's night. Solstice wanes, the chill returns, fruit ripens in the final act of defiance before leaves drop to mulch. Walking Jess through the copse of oak and ash, fields lined with hawthorn and, he on ho and holly, slows waiting for the first frost, pre-icing the gin. Summer offering a last bounty of rosehip tea from the dogwood, crab apples for tastiest jelly, and blackberries to go with apples. The deep purple flesh plump, each parcel popping on the tongue. Eager fingers hadn't smashed it to pulp in the picking, leaving blood. Only clue as to whether it's vinyl vein is a cry of, oh fucking bollocks! Creepers stab in defiance. Dog runs ahead as we pick. Mum in her zipped up red coat laughing. What's your language, young lady? Moments later, she repeats the lament, giggling. Happiness rides the wind. The, eat weir, the wheat ears sway, taking love out of reach of the invasive hedgerow intruder. We watch as blackbirds dance between the prickles. Years of briar shuffle have left him deft at picking the best, most precious fruit. As I back away, memories fade. Dead branches grip fast, refusing to let go. I break the thorn from the decaying stem, punching through to my skin, drawing tears already pricking my eyes. The Kevlar I now wear only protects some parts, sensitive areas left bare indefinitely, 
the backs of my legs, my bingo arms, and my longing heart. <laughs> So I'm going to change it up a little bit now and go into some of my um, all saucy sex poems, let's be honest. Ooh. They're not all sex poems, but I can't make shame blush. Try. <laughs> Try. Oh yeah, I've got one that make him blush. Okay. Midday sun, sweat runs down your side. Let me drink this nectar. I actually wrote that to a, um, a schooner of Castleman Forex in Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, the uh, condensation on the outside would have been tastier than the content inside. I'd never had a glass of Castleman Forex, and I thought, I'm in Brisbane, I have to have some. I've just driven past the brewery. It was terrible. Anyway, <laughs> clearly not an Australian just yet. <laughs> the rain highlights fresh growth, hunes of green and blue. I breathe deep. Asked straight up, do you want to fuck? <laughs> I consider long and hard. Huh. Yes, <laughs> but not with you. <laughs> <laughs> I may spend way too much time on Tinder, I'm not quite sure, but it's great material. <laughs> One day, a buff, straight, single man wearing no shirt will follow me on Insta. <laughs> I believe in unicorns. <laughs> Lotion applied, soft folds, smarting, smooth silk. Tongue required attention, tongue attention required to freshly waxed skin. Painted nails take ages to dry. One chip will ruin the look of them as I drag them down your back. <laughs> Foot fetish. This is one of those tankers that required a sequence. Soak, then massage oil into the soul. The cleansed digits fill your mouth. The desk, a place for my feet to rest when I'm working. At home, your back. Hmm. Kneeling, begging at my feet, permission not to stand, to bow lower. Fortune cookie told me I'd gain wisdom by falling into a ditch. It was your arms. <laughs> Snake. I know some of you have heard this before. And I know Melinda kind of likes it. Too much food swallowed whole. Mouth open, face distended. Watching you eat is tough. Curled up under the covers, blood warm and warming, enjoying the sensation, I shrink from your touch. I listen as you expound, nod and grin as you spit, no venom on me. Eyes clouded over, ready to shed, snakes lose its own old skin, I left on a Friday. not really a sex poem but it's uh, kind of um, I kind of like it so I'm gonna read it betrayal this bag of keratin frame of collagen and calcium that I call my body betrays me joints bring stiffness no longer freedom of movement airbag turning to windbags the filtering organs calcify torturing me with boulders Barbed wire springs forth, unwanted to be plucked. Highways in the brain pop and leave, laziest of eyes, lazier. Lastly, and by far the worst, that brings the most concern, is it's turning me into a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> Fear. 
Now, um, a few weeks ago, some of you would have heard uh, Sarah St. Vincent Welsh read about Morpheus and giving him a lift, and that spawned a poem that I read out a few weeks ago called Giving Morpheus Head. Now, I'm not going to read that one, because what we then discussed afterwards is about Medusa and her first love. <coughs> So that's actually got me thinking, and I couldn't stop at one because she's just such a fertile ground. So this first one is called Medusa's Harem. Males scattered, each hardened to perfection, just to her liking. Chiseled abs, carved thighs, sculpted arms, pinnacles of masculinity. No names, but David. <laughs> Seated from her th throne, surveying the prostate at her feet, they had sent dick pics without asking, mm -hmm. without consent, after she'd shared her number for coffee date. The picture of Javility, sunshine casting her in silhouette, statue on the shoreline, arms holding hat in the sea breeze, sunglasses mirroring her selfie, her lithe figure showing, throwing shadows, but they never looked at closely, they swiped right. In the moment his face contorts and groans emit, she opens her eyes, looking into his for the first time, watches as his beads sweat, skins turning from rosy pink to pale gray and anneal, sensing as his whole body catches up with the cock he's so proud of. <laughs> Rises herself up, feels the last of his softness trickle down her thigh. Me too, honey, me too. <laughs> Tinder, it's evil. Anyway, Medusa. On the beach with sand between her toes and in her knickers as she sits, feeling the last of the warmth as the sun drops below the horizon. Serpentine tresses caress shoulders, swaying in the breeze, reminding her of him. She recalls her first love, the man of strength and courage, once admired by kings and queens for his skill with bow and sword. His touch sheared into her flesh, pressure on the small of her back, stroking her arm, holding cheeks between, her, between his hands as they kissed. As he studied her features, fine hair standing, goosebumps all over, shivering in anticipation as breath brushed. His blindness allowed them both to see clearer. She that a man could see beyond her beauty. He that seeing into the soul can be safer than judging by hair. <laughs> I've been given a need of extra time, so I've had to quickly jot some notes down. Razors. Now, this, 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 this goes back to the grief, and then I'll do one more after this, and that will be it. But this, um, this came out of reading Penelope and Merlin's Irregular. If I could use a word for my feelings, it would be one with bite. Edges, spikes, jagged sharp points, teeth gnawing into my flesh, scratching at my insides, clawing to be let out, heard for all its acid and rage. But these words are represented by a nice round one that rolls off the tongue with its soft vowels and mmm sounds. Mourn just doesn't cut it. Mm. And the last one, which I really had to scribble down quickly because it was on my phone. You are cordially invited to afternoon tea. Boil kettle, warm bone china. Scoop per person plus one for the pot. Angel cake, sponge, jam and cream to keep it moist, soft for the forking around the plate. Wrapped tongue around, let it slide, slide down, nice and moist. 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 Lick your lips, clear your throat. 
So, want to come?